Alright guys, so first off, I got all the uh, feedback on the last video about, you know, the reaction videos. Most of you guys were saying, don't show my face. Um, I, you know, I agree, that's probably a good idea. You know, the only thing I was going to suggest, you know, I could do the video, you know, if, if you guys would uh, still watch it or still be cool with it, I could do the video wearing a mask. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I could still, you know, verbalize my reaction to the video and, you know, you, know, you could still see basically most of my reaction you know you wouldn't be able to see me uh you know smile or whatever like that but it would still be the same thing but anyways man uh that's another suggestion you know i could do the reaction video with a mask on i don't know you just leave, leave in the comments what you guys think man what you guys think about that um anyways getting on to this video now i'm gonna say a lot of stuff in this video is very sensitive information as far as you know people are gonna feel some type of way about this i'm gonna talk about killers i'm gonna talk about bodies who killed who this is going to be a lot of stuff that, you know, in my last video where I did this for that neighborhood Taekwon World and STL and EBT, a lot of people got very upset. And most people called me a rat and called me a snitch. Now, just to preempt all these comments real quick on this video before I get to this information. Everything that I'm going to say in this video is already known by both guys in the streets and by law enforcement, okay? snitching is when you go to the cops and you tell them something that they don't already know if I go to the police and I tell them you know guys I think uh, I think Rod Blagojevich tried to sell Barack Obama sentence seat that's not snitching if I go to the police and say guys don't don't say anything but the word on the street is Drew Peterson killed his wife that's not snitching police already know certain things telling them that stuff that they already know is not snitching Everything in this video they know. They, you know, don't have enough evidence. You say, well, well why aren't the guys busted then? They don't have enough evidence to, bu to book them. They just don't. You know what I'm saying? Hear hearsay is not enough. When I was, you know, arguing back and forth online with Bang the Hitter, uh, young Pappy's homie, I was threatening to, you know, expose the crap that he had done. And he said, it's just hearsay. You don't have any evidence. He was right. That was a, that was a good comeback. I couldn't, I couldn't answer him after that. Okay, so... All this stuff is just hearsay. I'm not going to the cops with any material evidence, so this is not, you know, going to get nobody booked. Now, a lot of people in the last video were saying, well, you're going to get these guys killed. Even guys who were from Chicago were saying, you know, you're, you're going to get these guys killed um, because you're going to tell their ops who did what. Guys, let me tell you something about Chicago gangs. Chicago gang members do not find out who their enemies are from YouTube. They don't. They're not sitting on Chicago news trying to find out who's after them. The majority of these guys grew up with the guys or went to the same school as the guys who are now their mortal enemies okay these guys are guys on the next block they know them they know their government name they know them by face okay some of them even know their address they just can't roll because they know that you know their block is being watched and all that kind of stuff but listen this is not like back in the day when you had these citywide gangs with these complex networks that took orders from hierarchies and you might have guys moving through one neighborhood on, on an errand from somebody else and you don't know where he's from, you know what I'm saying, and uh, exposing him or exposing his face or name might, you know, m might let somebody know his affiliation who wouldn't have otherwise known it. These are not those days anymore. These are just blocks, okay, and you know who lives on the next block, you know their face. So I'm not, you know, that's not going on. So, anyways, getting on to, to the uh, murders, let's get to this. On the south side of Chicago, okay, at about 51st and Cottage Grove, is one of the most notorious gang sets in Chicago. This is a set of Mickey Cobras um, called 051 Young Money, okay? Now, these guys are not real famous for rap, but they're famous for killing, okay? Because they're into it with a lot of guys who are famous for rap, and they have some revenge cycles going with, particularly with the set 600 and THF 46 uh, who are also Mickey Cobras and BDs um, but they have some revenge cycles that going with these two other gangs that have claimed it's just a bloodbath and I'm gonna go to I'm gonna get into this in this video you guys are gonna see I mean it's just bodies dropping left and right man it's like a it's like a genocide going on down there these guys have many many killers with multiple bodies okay and the most prolific one is a guy named Kiddo I'm gonna, but he's locked up right now. I'm going to talk about him uh, in a little bit. Now, the, the the fact that they're Mickey Cobras, I had heard the word on the street they used to be GDs um, prior to 2009, but that they flipped to Mickey Cobra. Now, it's kind of strange because they're in tool with with, uh, with uh, THF46, who's got Mickey Cobras in it. Um, 
but uh, you know they're renegade Mickey Cobras. So it's you know it's, it's not nothing like. And again, like I said, these are just blocks now. The gang affiliation means little to nothing. Now they do have a couple members though who are other stuff. They have one guy um, named Melly who's a killer who I believe is a BD or an insane BD. Um, and they have a few other things mixed in there. But um, anyways, getting on to what's going on with them. Now, just to describe their neighborhood a little bit, 51st and Cottage Grove is a hood, but it's in very close proximity to one of the most upscale, rich areas of the city, that is Hyde Park. It's where Obama's from. Okay, it's where the University of Chicago is. It's a That's an integrated neighborhood, white, Asian, uh, black, but wealthy, okay? Um, and it looks, I mean, the, the homes there, you know, they, they might look a little bit nicer, but as far as, like, the structure of the homes, it's the same type of buildings that you're going to find in, like, other uh, lower-income areas. However, um, 051 Young Money, like, their block is just outside of that rich area, 51st and Cottage Grove. Um, now, THF 46 and 44 are just to the north of them. 600, I believe, is just a little bit to the west of them, and or 600 is to the south of them, I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, they've got enemies to the north and south, 600 to the south, and O Block also to the south, and uh, THF 46 and 44 to the north. Now, these guys are also into it with Folly Boys, okay, who are stones. Um, they're also into it, I believe, with uh, 300 Lamron, O Block, 600, all those. Okay, so you guys pretty much, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you pretty much know the sides in this gang war, the B, those BD sets versus these sets that are other stuff. Um, uh, that's too long to go into in this video. If you've got questions about that, there's plenty of videos on that on the internet, and you can hit somebody up in the comments. All right, now, who are their killers? All right, um, actually, first, let me say, 051 Young Money got known, I would say, uh, they, they first started to get known when a rapper from their gang named Lil Mark got killed. Okay, now, Lil Mark... Uh, he was he was a moderately well-known rapper, not 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 real famous. Um, but he got killed, uh, and I did a video on him, so I'm not going to go into all the details of that because I already did that in that video. He got killed by a bus stop, um, and people had speculated. I had heard a rumor, kind of an internet rumor, that it was a guy named Twilla from THF46. However, this is one of those things that I'm not sure about because guys from MOB and guys from 051 Young Money itself were claiming that it was D Rose from 600 that had done that hit and uh, you know this is kind of something where I don't know who to believe because it's like I don't know if they would want to take away credit from Twilla for that they wouldn't want to give D Rose credit for that so I don't know man just so you guys know <clears throat> MOB and 051 were claiming that it was D Rose some other dudes were claiming that it was uh, Twilla from THF alright uh, could have been even been somebody else. It's one of those things I don't know. But anyways, Little Mark got killed, okay? Now, 051 also got known, okay? Another another publicity event for them, I, I would call it, was when they killed the rapper L.A. Capone. Now, L.A. Capone, you know, he was he was going to blow. He was one of the biggest rappers. And, I mean, not at the time, but he was one of the rappers with the most potential in Chicago. He was still turning up. He was only 17 years old when he got killed. He got killed by two guys from 051 Young Money. A guy named Lil Mick, okay, and a guy named Rocco. Now, L.A. Capone, uh, I'm not sure who exactly, you know, who's, whose bullets actually hit L.A. in that case. Um, but Lil Mick and Rocco were the ones, ones who did the hit on L.A. Now, they did it outside of a recording studio that I've visited in a couple of my videos. I've, I've driven past that, that spot in a few, in a few videos. Um, as L.A. was coming out of that recording studio, it was over on like 71st or something like that, and uh, Stony Island, I believe. And <clears throat> how they knew that he was going to be there, a rumor had started that the cab driver, that uh, that some cab driver had actually given them a tip. That was just an internet rumor. That was later turned out to be false. So, so you know, how they got L.A.'s location is still unknown, okay? But anyways... Uh, some events that took place the day after L.A. died um, that a lot of people don't know about. So they were having a block party over like on Front Street after L.A. died. And um, some guys had come through uh, from 051. A guy named Adrilla, okay, uh, was one of them. And he shot Rondo Number no. 9 in his back uh, trying to run while they were celebrating for L.A. Okay. 
Uh, and he, now Rondo was hitting his back twice. Now with Rondo at the time was a member of Folly Boys named Coquilla. And a guy from 051 Young Money named G Arrow shot him in his chest and both of his legs. Okay, now now again, L.A. Capone was not Rocco's first body. Rocco had also killed a guy from 4-6, who I don't know. Uh, I don't know his name. And he'd also killed a guy from Blackgate. Now, Blackgate, that's where SD is from. For those of you guys who don't know. But uh, Rocco had killed somebody from 4-6 and somebody from Blackgate. So Rocco, to my knowledge, the word on the street, has three bodies that I know of. Now, 051 Young Money's beef with 4-6 THF started back in... 2008 when a guy named Zico died. Now Zico was a guy who had been away at college and when I had first heard that this guy had been killed, you know, I wasn't you know, I wasn't really sure what would have been going on, but guys, just because somebody's in college don't mean that they don't have gang ties. And when he came back, you know, he had ties with a guy with guys from 051. Uh, he had been shot and killed. Now that was back in 2008. That was how the beef started with 4-6. Now I've heard that their beef with 600 started when uh, 600 had killed a guy named T Streets from 051, and the name that I've that I've heard associated with that hit is a guy named M Thang, although I'm not sure about that. Okay, now the top shooters from 051, one is Kiddo, one is a guy named Arrow, one is a guy named Montana, a guy named Uchi, a guy named Melly, Adrilla, Tristo, and Rocco. Okay. These are these are probably the top killers for 051 Young Money. Now again, just to run through that one more time: Kiddo, Arrow, Montana, Uchi, Melly, Adrilla, Tristo, and Rocco. Now this guy Kiddo, he killed three body. He killed three guys in ten months. Okay, and then the cops took him off the street. Um, he killed Shaq from 600. He killed Tricks from 600, and he killed a guy named Black from 46. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Montana, this guy Montana is the blood brother of the guy named Fats, um, who, uh, you know, sometimes it's called Fats World or whatever. Um, he, he's his blood brother. Um, and Montana also caught a body on 4-6 named Quint. Um, now, Montana's other nickname is Little Tony, but he goes by the nickname Mr. 4-6-K, because he's let off shots on 4-6's block, like, very frequently. Okay, now, this guy Melly, okay, who I'm going to show uh, clips of in this video. He reportedly is the guy who killed Lil Durk's manager, OTF Chino. Okay? Uh, because OTF Chino um, was in the song by THF TP called Bus Stop. And this was a song that was mocking 051 and Lil Mark. Lil Mark, again, was the rapper from 051 Young Money who was killed by a bus stop. This was a song mocking him. OTF Chino was in that video. So Melly didn't like that, and he killed OTF Chino for being in that video. Now, the other body that Melly caught is a guy named Rahim from 46. Now, this is FBG Duck's blood cousin. Um, now, the reason why he killed Rahim was that 4-6 had shot him and G. Arrow in their head for killing OTF Chino. They survived, and a few days after Melly and, uh, and uh, Arrow went back looking for revenge because 4-6 had shot them in their head, they killed Rahim in an alley on 4-6's territory. Okay? Now, it's interesting because another guy is locked up right now for that body, I believe. Um, Melly, I believe, also right now is locked up, um, but, uh, yeah, he reportedly, the word on the street is the guy who killed OTF Chino, because, again, um, because, uh, because 4-6 had just shot him and Giero in their head. The guy who killed OTF Nooski, OTF Nuno, this was that guy named Adrilla, at least this is the word on the street, okay, this guy Adrilla had killed OTF Nuno. Adrilla and a guy named Slizzy had came from two different directions and killed Nunu. And the reason why they killed OTF Nunu was because little Dirk kept on dissing them. Okay. Now, just as a side note, another uh, another um, gang that 051 Young Money has clicked up with is Su TTB on 39th and Lake Park. Uh, 
And this is the gang that TTB Nez is a member of, and TTB Nez is frequently, you know, in music videos with members of 051 Young Money. He's always hanging out with them. It's practically like the same gang. This is the gang that killed Hydea Pendleton because she was related to a guy named Gooda from 4-6. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. It's Gooda or Gutta or whatever. She was related to a guy named uh, from a guy to a guy from 4-6 THF. And I don't I still don't believe she was the intended target, but you know, it's probably just territory, wrong place, wrong time. She was killed by Suwu. And you know, Suwu a lot of times claims 051's hits and vice versa. Okay. So um anyways, yeah. Uh th that was, you know, that was kind of an ugly situation. Uh, you know, any time an innocent person dies like that. Um, but there's been a lot of in innocent people that have caught in, uh, bullets in this crossfire. Okay, now, the reason why people think that Twilla from 4-6 killed Lil Mark is because Lil Mark had shot Twilla in his chest and neck, but Twilla survived. Okay, now, uh, the word on the street is that Lil Mark was revenge for L.A. Capone. Again, 051 and M.O.B., who's over at 58th and Wabash, Another set that 051 has clicked up with. They claim that it was D Rose that did Little Mark uh, as a revenge for L.A. Capone. Now, a few months after that, 051 Young Money killed Little Boo for who from 600 um, for Little Mark. Now, some people think that it was Arrow from 051 Young Money that killed Little Rob from Lamron, but uh, another. Uh, rumor that I've heard is that it was a guy named Preboy. Okay, now, you know, again, which of these to believe? I don't know. Uh, I've heard that it was Arrow. I've heard that it was Preboy, who killed Little Rob from Lamron. Preboy is also the little brother of Kiddo, who's 051's top hitter. Now, Preboy is locked up for killing a 15-year-old boy for weed. Preboy went to buy weed uh, from this kid, and when he got into an altercation with this guy. Um, uh, what happened was that this guy, this 15-year-old kid, started disrespecting Fats, who, again, is one of 051's dead homies. Okay, and in response to that, Preboy killed him. I've heard that Lil Boo from 600 had killed Polo from 051. Okay, uh, so, you know, this is going to be a little peek into the back and forth between this. There was a series of back and forth killings that took place. Um, 600M thing... So, so that's another body. That's just a side note. 600 Lil Boo had killed Polo. That was why Lil Boo was a target. But 600 M thing had killed T Streets. Okay. Then 051 killed Shaq. Okay. And again, that was uh, that was Kiddo. Then what happened was that a lot of you guys are going to wonder why was Fats killed? Okay. Why was that guy Fats from 051 killed? Okay. So here's the thing. 05, so 600 M thing killed T Streets. 051 killed Shaq. Then what happened was that Fats was claiming Shaq's body. And so in response to that, 600 killed him. Then 051 killed Trix for Fats. Then 051 killed LA. Then 600 killed Polo for LA. Then 051 killed Lil Boo for Polo. So let me go through that one more time. 600 killed T Streets. Then 051 killed Shaq. Then Fats was claiming Shaq's body, so 600 killed him. Then 051 killed Trix for Fats. Then 051 killed LA. Then 600 killed Polo for LA. Then 051 killed Lil Boo for Polo. Okay, now <clears throat> Lil Boo uh, was a guy who TTB Nez just mentioned in his uh, FTO Part 2 song, in which he had a lot of 051 members in that music video. Uh, so, you know, it's to the point where some people think that TTB Nez is even a member of 051. He's not. He's actually Sue TTB, but those two gangs are so close with uh, MOB and, and all of them. So, and Jaro. Okay, but again, the thing with Jaro is, uh, you know, that's th this whole billionaire black stitching incident is not good for that whole relationship. Now, just a couple um, details that I forgot to mention from the last video on Taekwon World, some things that I had to fill in. People had been asking um, about some of the, uh, like, dead killers from, from STL. There was a guy from STL named Boss Trell um, who 
reportedly had killed a guy from Oblog named Sherrod. Now, that might have been K.I. I also heard that K.I. had killed Sherrod, but uh, a more credible source told me that it was Boss Trell. Um, and Sherrod was the blood brother of a guy named C. Murda. Okay, now, another thing that I forgot to mention in that STL video was that um, the guy from uh, from their gang who had made TYMB was that guy Seaball, who's coming home pretty soon. So, I just took you guys, you know, for a little sneak peek into this bloodbath between 4-6, uh, Lamron 600, and 051 Young Money. Now, I'm going to do separate videos on Lamron uh, and on Oblock and on 600, but um, you guys see that uh, 051 Young Money, they got a lot of killers, man, especially this guy, uh, especially this guy Kiddo, who's currently locked up. Um, but they also still have some killers that are free. All right, so uh, you guys see it's just back and forth. I mean, none of this is really over money. It's just disrespect and revenge. When, uh, when what's his name? Little Chief De Niro uh, was asked by Vlad, you know, to sum up the violence in Chicago, he said one word, revenge. That, that's what a lot of this is. You know, uh, it, it's like, I, I always think of what Gandhi said, and an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. That's really what we got going on, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the culture of the streets demands uh, payback, and it just ends up creating this bloodbath, you know what I'm saying? Because every time there's a response, they got to come back and respond again. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it seems rational. I've been in this situation, man, where I've had a loved one, you know, found, you know, with a gunshot wound to his head, dead. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and revenge, revenge comes to your mind, okay? And it seems to make perfect sense because you think, well, if I don't take revenge, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to look like a sucker and people are going to think that they can just, you know, come and smoke all my homies and nothing's going to happen. You know what I'm saying, but uh, revenge, it, revenge is a is a trap. It's an illusion. You know what I'm saying. It's like uh, it's like uh, in, in the Bible where it says, "Revenge is mine," says the Lord. I will repay. You got to leave that in the hands of God. You you got to leave that in the hands of God. Our job is to. I know this sounds impossible. I know this sounds superhuman. You know what I'm saying, but our job is just to forgive, um, and to leave revenge to God because. Uh, because, you know, everybody's going to die. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's going to die. Nobody's going to live forever. It's not like escaping this is going to somehow uh, allow us to walk off, you know, into the sunset of immortality. No. We're all going to the grave, man. We, we all have a deadly illness called humanity, called mortality, and we're all dying of it soon. So we, we got to think about that, you know what I'm saying, and, and think, about, uh, think about what happens after that instead of uh, what feels good now, I would say. So anyways, man, uh, RIP to all the fallen in this Southside game war, and we're going to keep going through the hoods. This is your boy Chicago News. I'm out.